Hi, I'm Lindsay Oates, a head volleyball coach here at UNC, and we're excited for our first edition of our 2024 season, The Coaches Show. So we started this last year just to give uh, fans of Bears Volleyball kind of an inside look into UNC. I will have a special guest with me every week the rest of the season. We will put these out on a Wednesday or a Thursday each week, depending on our travel schedule. So we are ready to kick off our season, and our first real match is tomorrow night, Friday, August 30th against Michigan State. It's pack the bank night, so that means $5 tickets, and we want a sellout. We've never had a sellout here for volleyball at UNC, and tomorrow night is gonna be the night. Um, I am so excited about it. We were really close last year against Stanford, our opening match with 2,800. Bank of Colorado Arena seats close to 3,000, I think five short of 3,000. So let's do that tomorrow night. If you are watching, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your coworkers to get to the Bank of Colorado Arena because we want to pack the place and, and set a new record for volleyball. So super excited about our opening match tomorrow. The following night, we will face Florida, the Florida Gators. Um, both matches are at 6 p.m. and that will also be a fun match. So hopefully that same sellout crowd will return 24 hours later um, to see us back in action. A little bit more about our schedule. So we did have an exhibition match this past Saturday against Arizona. Um, we won't talk a whole lot about it. If you noticed, we didn't post scores. We didn't post a box score. Um, we don't want Michigan State and Florida to know a whole lot from that match. We don't know much about them. And so every little bit of information helps um, or hurts as you're trying to prepare for that first match. So that's the reason that we didn't talk about it a whole lot and it wasn't broadcast on ESPN+. Plus. But from here on out, all of our home matches will be on ESPN+. Plus. All of our conference matches, home or away, will be on ESPN+. Plus. So the only matches that will not be there is our matches at CSU, CU, DU, and Wichita State. So those three local schools have their own networks, and then Wichita State will have um, their own network as well when we play them. So we'll keep you posted on the website about where you can watch the Bears if you're not going to be there in person. So a little bit about those um, away schools too. We have a fun event coming up when we play the Buffs in Boulder. So if you want to travel with the Bears um, on a bus, get dinner, get your match ticket, uh, and get your ride there September 11th. It's a Wednesday night. The bus will leave at 4 p.m. from the Bank of Colorado Arena. You can email us as a coaching staff, um, Jaden McCartney, our new director of ops, or I and we'll get you more information and get you signed up to go with us to Boulder, which will be a fun opportunity in our first time doing that where we take fans on the road with us. So that'll be a fun one. Coming up this uh, week before we'll do our next coaches show is also our match at CSU. So every year we alternate with them. They are part of the tournament. They will also be playing Michigan State and Florida just in reverse order this weekend. So we will take on the Rams on Tuesday, September 3rd, in Fort Collins, and we'd love to have a good Bears cheering section uh, there. They will always get good crowds, and so we need to uh, get some blue and gold in Moby Arena. Uh, so we're really excited about our schedule. It's one of the fun things that our players talk about is that we're going to play uh, top-tier schools that are really going to challenge us, prepare us for the NCAA tournament or postseason, and we want uh, those those teams here in Bank of Colorado Arena as opposed to going there because that's fun for our fans it's fun for our players and because of rpi scheduling those types of teams want to play in Greeley and against schools like us and so the the colorado state unc uh, co-hosted tournament is a great rpi tournament for teams like florida and michigan state so that's why we're able to in a lot of sports you know football men's basketball those type of schools would never come to unc to play at our place um, they would pay UNC money to go there, but it doesn't work that way in volleyball. They're not going to pay us a whole lot of money, and we are able to get them on our home court. So don't miss out on those matches right here in Greeley. Let's change directions a little bit and talk about our new team this year. We are really fired up for this group of athletes. It is one of the most connected um, and fun groups that I've ever had. And I'm going into my 20th year here as head coach. And I love this group and how they interact with each other. And that goes a long way. It goes a long way on the court in terms of performance, 
but it just makes the whole process more enjoyable too. It's, it's fun to coach them. They have fun with each other on and off the court. Um, it's light, which relieves pressure and they just can trust each other um, going forward and not worried about any distractions. And I love that. And not that that couldn't creep in. Every team in the country at any sport has to fight against that. So we're not immune to that, but I really like our foundation um, of this group. Let me talk a little bit about our new players that we've added to our roster. So if you've already followed UNC volleyball, you know some, are, some of our returners. Sid Cole's back for her fifth year as a setter. Um, we're excited to have her leading the group. And we added another fifth year senior. And so we have two of those, um, as our players call them, grandmas, <laughs> because they're a little bit older in their fifth season. And that is Sam Steele, our libero. And what she has added, in addition to great play, is leadership. And that's what we've appreciated most about her. She joined us in January from Ohio University. She's originally from Omaha, Nebraska. So back a little closer to home, maybe, where her parents can drive and see us. And that was one of the deciding factors in, in choosing us. But I've appreciated her leadership because she is vocal. Um, she's not afraid to say the hard things if necessary. And that's important in a team dynamic. Uh, Sid's personality is much more quiet, pleasant. She's so easy to get along with, but she doesn't want to fulfill that role of kind of the enforcer on our team. And so Sam is able to do that in a way that is well-respected and um, with a great heart behind it. And that's really important, especially in females. And so Sam has brought that, even though she's new um, to the court and we've loved the way that she's led our group. And so You'll see that we're digging a lot of balls. We're passing well. We put her in a two-person serve receive quite often because she can handle a lot of court. And so we love what she's doing on the court. But as I mentioned, even more importantly, we love what she's doing in the locker room and getting our team organized on the court as well. In addition to her on the defensive side is G.A. McCarter. So she transferred here from Mississippi State. She is a sophomore and she's originally from memphis tennessee so not typically a hotbed for us recruiting um, here in colorado but uh you never know how the transfer portal will work or what is a good fit and ga has been a great fit uh, she's starting for us um, as a ds right now and has been a great addition i love her energy she is flying around the court making great saves she had a really good match against arizona um, with a great serving run and some uh, just incredible saves. So those two in the backcourt is probably the first thing that you as a fan will notice that's different about uh, your Bears 24 season is that we're keeping balls off the floor and those two are a big piece of that. Um, we also have a freshman DS. So there's three new faces um, in our backcourt. Our returning backcourt player is Bella Lapore, and you'll see her, her on the floor as well. She's a starter for us and is coming back for a sophomore season after having a really good freshman year, part of that playing at Libero. So she's she's still looking very strong. But our, our third backcourt new player is one of our freshmen. So Finley Scalehaas from Iowa. Um, she flies around the court as well, just provides great energy, is a phenomenal teammate, uh, and is the one right now in our first three weeks of the season that I'm not sure she's gone a day without asking for extra reps. She is a gym rat. Um, a coach's kid. She has all the intangibles that we want in a player at any position. And so she's going to be really good. Um, there's some adjustments, some training differences at this level that we've asked her to make. And so we're working through that, but I would be surprised if she doesn't have a significant contribution by the end of the year because she's athletic, she's fast, she sees the game well. Um, she's just got a little, get a little bit more comfortable uh, with this level. And that could happen this weekend. Um, she's certainly capable of that. So we're excited about Finley's potential here as a bear. Our two other freshmen, we brought in three this year. Um, Addie Waller is a setter from Rock Canyon High School. So our Colorado recruit, and we've loved having setters from Colorado. That's really been a good pipeline for us. So we have Sid Cole, who's a fifth year senior, Mia Lydiard, who is from Salt Lake City, Utah, and is a junior this year. And then we have Addie Waller, who is a freshman. And we're excited about her potential as well. She has some size. She has very good instincts. Um, another really good teammate. That is what stood out to us in the recruiting process as we looked at different setters is that, man, people love to play for her. They elevate their play because they're playing next to Addie Waller. 
Um, and what a great characteristic to have in a sport like volleyball, because that's what you need your setter to do is elevate the play of other people. And she brings that quality to the court. So she's been fun to coach so far. Our third freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska is Maddie Rink. And we're excited about her potential as well. She brings some size. She's played for a good club. She comes in with pretty good training. Um, as a middle blocker, it's hard as a freshman. It's one of those positions that is maybe the biggest gap between high school and club to college level because the game's fast on the other side of the net. And instead of two options coming at you, you have four, maybe even five with the back row attack, the setter dumping, um, you know, and obviously three front row hitters, two or three front row hitters. So it's a lot coming at a middle blocker. She's adjusting well. We really like what we're seeing from Maddie so far. Um, and she'll play a big role for us as well. And she already has in practice situations playing a really important role. So that rounds out um, our five newcomers, two transfers, three freshmen. We have 16 on the roster, so 11 returners. Uh, and I can't say it enough. I just love how this group works together. And that sounds so basic, uh, but anybody who's been involved in a team sport understands how important that is. One other topic I wanted to hit for today is the NCAA rules changes. So there are some significant ones that you're gonna notice as a fan. And if you watched a little bit of college volleyball on TV, the start of the season was Tuesday that was televised, you maybe picked up on these. I had the privilege of being the NCAA rules chair for the last three years. So I was um, had a front seat and a deciding factor as a part of the committee to vote on these rule changes. There's eight rule changes. Some of them are, are insignificant to the fan about jerseys and jewelry and some things that don't actually affect the play, but two really important ones that will affect the play. And the first one is that we are now allowing a double contact uh, from the second contact. It's already allowed on the first contact, but now what we'll see is setters can just mangle the ball. It can look however ugly it looks, and it is legal as long as it stays on your side of the net. So you can't send it over and it look ugly, but on your side of the net, the refs are gonna say there's not much advantage gained. And so it is allowed. Um, and that was part of the decision-making process is that there's not much of an advantage gained. You still want your setter to set clean balls. That is best for your hitting, for your offensive rhythm to set good clean balls and not double it. So you, you don't see very many. Um, in our exhibition match, because of the role I had been in for the last three years, and I'm actually not the chair anymore as of uh, this week, but because of that role I was in, I'm really looking for it, and I'm curious how it will change the game. I, I'm sure hopeful that this is a good change, a change for the better, that there's less whistles, more of letting the players dictate the outcome of the match. And so in our exhibition, I was very aware of it. I think in that entire match, there was probably one ball that I thought, oh, that would have been called in a, a year ago. So one ball in an entire match is not, you're not gonna see a significant uh, difference at the division one level. Uh, trainer, we're still gonna train our setters to set clean balls, but it is a significant rule change. And so fans don't be yelling double when you see it go to a teammate because the refs are gonna ignore you. Um, the other rule change is that you can use two liberos. Now, libero, libero, you can say it either way. For the Bears, you're probably only going to see one in that opposite colored jersey. The, Sam Steele, our current libero, is a phenomenal passer, defender, and server. So we don't see the need with our current personnel to use two liberos. But I, you'll see it in some teams where they might have a serve receive specialist and a defensive specialist, and they're both in that opposite colored jersey. They're playing the same position. So they're not both gonna be on the floor at the same time. They can't go for do two different people. They're essentially going for each other, if you can think of it that way. That was the simplest way for me to understand it, is two liberos playing the same position. So it can specialize that position a little bit more if that fits your personnel. I wouldn't say we're never gonna use it. Our current personnel, it doesn't fit, but I think you'll see some high level teams using two liberos and we'll see how it impacts the match. One of the uh, rationale behind making that change is that women's college volleyball is the only level that doesn't use that rule right now. So international volleyball, as we watch the Olympics, men's and women's can have two liberos. Men's college volleyball can have two liberos. At the club level, 
they can have two liberos. So we were trying to get women's college volleyball more in line with that current rule. That really was um, the first reason. The second reason is that some people, I would say more at the division three level, want more opportunities for playtime. They carry big rosters, and this is a way without uh, adding more substitutions to get more people on the court and more opportunity for playtime. So that was kind of a secondary reason. Uh, so I'll really be curious how that impacts the division one level and especially like it within our conference or teams that we play against. So just wanted to kind of update you on those two NCAA rule changes. Um, and hopefully they're good for the game, especially since I have a, a big stake in it and my name might be attached to it, uh, good or bad. So we're excited about that. And we obviously felt like it was a good change for the game as crowds are increasing and more publicity for volleyball. It's really a growing sport right now and it's exciting. And so we want to make sure that the rules are allowing for that growth and even maybe facilitating it, that it's a fun game to watch. So we are excited for our season. We hope you are too. We will see you in the arena tomorrow for Pack the Bank against Michigan State. Go Bears!